Um, I'm a designer. Hello, I'm Glenda. And uh, while I've been watching today, there's just a lovely piece of visual poetry that's happening that I think exemplifies what design is. Designers don't invent things. We just keep ourselves alive, imaginative, and open to opportunity when we see it. So I don't know if any of you have been looking at this wonderful carpet uh, that's down here. And there's a lovely thing that's happening, and I don't know if it's from watching the Olympics, where I discovered that I have a really latent appetite for archery, um, <laughs> that there's this lovely target. But all these great people and all these ideas have been interacting with this design and putting themselves in the middle of Africa. Isn't Africa an exciting place to be at the moment? And that's what you've all been doing today. But then there's one step further, because someone wearing a pair of workers' shoes that became iconic of 70s punk culture and an anti-society statement introduced us to this lovely piece of visual poetry today. <laughs> Look at that. I couldn't have invented that behind my laptop in Santon in my sexy design studio. That is just gorgeous. Thank you, Noisy. <laughs> So, having used up some of my time being playful, Digital Ubuntu, everyone's invited. Our studio has worked in design and branding, and we've spent a lot of time with startup businesses, enterprises, helping people grow in business through design. But we now run to one simple design idea and formula, which we think is very important for South Africa's economy. And it's not a new idea, it's a very old idea. And that is, a sustainable economy really relies on having one successful business per family. No great shakes. Hundreds of migrants went to Manhattan and proved that. Loads of trade immigrant people moved to America and developed a very strong entrepreneurial culture from being tradespeople and running successful businesses. Now, how would that affect South Africa? And let me just quantify here. The family notion we are speaking of is not mom, pop, and two kids in the Western notion. We're speaking of an Ubuntu sense of family. I have my immediate family. I have my extended family. I have the community I live in. I can be a role model to all of them, and I can have influence on a great number of them. So it's not a notion of family of a tiny insular unit. And let me highlight also what the enterprise development sector looks like and to really focus on where we focus our attentions. Enterprise development at the moment is, looks like this pyramid. I'm just going to test the pointer thing. Where you'll see most of the investment in this country happens in the middle band of companies that are between 1 million and 35 million because it's been identified that that is where job creation happens. That is where real difference will be made. And we don't agree with that. Where we want to focus is right on the bottom here at the informal sector startup. We just need to get one successful business going in that category to influence a family of people to believe that they could start a business and that business could change their lives. And the Global Enterprise Monitor, which is an international study of countries' abilities to be entrepreneurial, has told us some very interesting things about South Africa. Our appetite in the last five years for business and for design and invention and innovation has gone up by 12%. Our failure in business has gone down by 40%. More businesses are failing than they ever have before in South Africa. And what they attribute that to is one of the indexes is a thing called fear of failure. South Africans' fear of failure, the lack of belief in themselves to run businesses, has gone up which is actually quite alarming. I'd like to introduce you to one of the businesses that we keep as a, an icon for ourselves. Uh, it's a man called Richard. What you see behind me is the Nerd Street Taxi Rank. He's run his business here very successfully for 15 years to um, running a braai or a roastery, if you want to call it a fancy word, or a barbecue uh, for Americans. And what he's done is for the last 15 years, he's bribed on this very simple device. But the real magic in this image are these two girls. Both of them have been put through university by the proceeds of their dad's bribe. Now that for us is a perfect example of what 
one successful business could mean for a family. Now, what could that mean for South Africa? We're a country of uh, social welfare, and this, this really was for people to show you. This is what he buys. Um, smileys and sheep's head and cobs. It's not sophisticated, but actually could put two girls through university. So in a social welfare country, what could that mean? How could it really make a difference? Well, in a country with 50.5 million people, 23 million of those subsist on social grants, handouts from government. That is supported by 4.7 million taxpayers. That is not a sustainable economy. It is more important for us to get people off social grants using design and business and entrepreneurial thinking and confidence than it is to create jobs right now. And it will be a longer term growth. It's not a short term win, but it's one that will make a much more efficient economy. So I'd like to meet you, uh, introduce you to someone else. This is uh, Zoliswe Sakulu. We met her some years ago. She um, is an entrepreneur down in Port Elizabeth. We met her at the Hope Factory, which is an enterprise development initiative. And when I first met her, she was making these uh, lovely dull doorstops. She was very, very proud of them. And she has a typical extended family. She supports her own kids and husband, her brother, her sister-in-law, her mother-in-law, their kids. So her home uh, is, is quite filled with people who rely on her income from whatever product she designs and develops. And when I met her some weeks ago at a stakeholders day in PE, she was no longer making the dolls, she was now making these purses. So I bought one, and it's lovely, I really like it. And she made 12 rand out of it, and it only cost me 30 bucks. But when I got back to our studio um, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, what really bugged our team was, can a grassroots entrepreneur really afford to be reinventing products all the time? Why is this happening? We put together this model once we understood a bit more about our universe. So that's Elisa's uh, home uh, township. She sells 10 purses to close friends and family, and she makes 120 rand. Then she sells to her church community, so now she sold 25 purses, she made 300 rand. But what's starting to happen is her network is her constraint. Because once she's sold to everyone in that network, so a couple more piece, people go, well, those are really nice purses, I'll buy one as a gift. She's tapped to market, but she's only made 360 rand. Now, the kids in the family who watch to do that and go through all that angst are going to go, hell, mum, I'm staying on the grant. Make babies, it's more profitable. Our country can't afford that. So digital Ubuntu, we thought, well, using our knowledge of digital, is there a way we can connect people using technology and what is open source available to new markets and new networks? It was a hypothesis on a pilot we put forward as our studio, and we found something really interesting. There are very many barriers to entry using and getting to engage with digital for business. In our country, there's 100% penetration of mobile handsets into the population. By the end of this year, 20% of our population will have access to the internet, either through a mobile phone or a laptop device, which is great, makes it fantastic. BBM, gorgeous. Chat to all your mates, awesome. But you cannot use it as a business tool. It's actually a barrier to entry and not an enabler, but we've designed steps around that. So step one, when you use Google AdWords, whenever you put out a search, billions and billions of searches go out of every part of South Africa every month. Behind that, Google keeps that information, that data that you're searching for, starts forming a, forming a massive database which informs the keywords, and that's how they sell ads. They bid in highest traded keywords. As a marketer and a strategist, that's a fantastic tool because it allows us to identify who's looking for what, where, and at what time in South Africa. Now, if I can link that to an entrepreneur who's about to make a product, I can tell them that you have a better chance of making this product than making this product. So these figures are terribly small, but if I search local purses, Local monthly searches for purses, only 480. So heads up, um, Salisui, we're not going to make a sustainable business that way. 
But our studio said to Zalisa, well, what happens if we take your purse and we do this? Take the zip out, it's going to cost you less, turn it on its side, and you move from a purse to a phone cover with a profit margin of 82 rand, now, not 100 rand. And if you then stretch that and say, okay, well, a purse could become an iPad cover or a smart tablet cover, and if you stretch it and made it a bit bigger and you gave it a strap, well, now it's a laptop case. So it, now as Elise has got three products in her range, it hasn't cost her much more. And if we go and do the searches, the figure shows that 246,000 people search every month in South Africa for laptop bags. So she's moved from a market of 480 people to potentially 246,000 people. And if we look further, that's the numbers that Google tracks for us. We can see that we are the second highest searchers in the world, India being ahead of us, looking for laptop bags. That's because they're just not available currently as a retail item in store. They're linked to computers and computer sales. that They're not seen as fashion items. So that's an opportunity for a grassroots entrepreneur to connect to a market. And if we stretch it further with Google, we can understand that the people searching are either in Gauteng or the Western Cape, which links to our understanding of population densities in South Africa. So there's uh, Zalisa's new range. Nice thing about this model now is she hasn't had to make five of each one to leave its stores to try and reach more people. Each of those stores will take it on consignment and they'll only pay her 120 days later. That's also not going to help her break out of her network and create a successful family business. So step two, we've got our prototype, let's publish. Now, at the beginning of this year, the Department of Trade and Industry with Google Business Sites launched a free website portal called Warza Online. The hype and the PR around it claimed that it would take an entrepreneur one hour to set up a website, and that website would give them a Gmail account, a shopping basket, and access to markets. Fantastic, our designers thought, we can do this thing. So we got online, and you, you can't read it here, but we spend a number of time in front of boards answering a very tricky question at a high strategic level, and that is, describe your business in one line. It's hard. It's called the elevator pitch, and lots of consultants talk it up. But now, Paul Zaliswe, who, um, by the way, can't access this on her feature phone or her smartphone, now has to try and sit in front of something. And there's a so now we start to understand the barriers to entry on this digital world. And that's why we started to question our own hypothesis. Everyone's invited, really? I don't think so. Because if la English isn't her first language, now she has to answer quite a sophisticated business question if she tries to access this on a phone or a smartphone, she can't get past the Google or any capture device, that little code that you have to type in, a feature phone, or 4.3 million of the Nokias that most people use, you can't do it. Added to which, our data is so expensive, by the time she's waded through trying to get this universe onto her little widget phone and understand it, her data package would have run out, and she'll have to go and buy more airtime. So it all starts getting quite complicated. But not to say, need to say there's Elisa's website, it's up and running. Um, she had already designed her own little logo and we just helped facilitate, put it up for her. And then you get to promote. Now promote's quite easy with Google AdWords because what we know about the people searching, uh, what words people are searching for, all we have to do is connect her AdWord to that particular search and you'll see people search laptop skins up at the top popped her ad, driving them to her website, which is great. So we've got a prototype, we've published, and we've promoted. So technically, this whole digital party works very well. But let's look at uh, Zalisa's income. 2,300 rand a month, she's beneath the social grant uh, cap. She's got two kids on social grants, and between all of them is a family pool with casual labor, they're boosting the budget. But if you read through those figures, you'll see that Zalisa's money doesn't belong to her, it's committed to her family, and it's quite tightly pressed. It's used up. And we then started to say, well now, for this digital model to work, Zalisa has to catch a taxi into town, she has to then go to an internet cafe and buy time. 
So what you'll start seeing in the orange figures is how Zalisa's money is being allocated and what it's doing to her monthly family income. So seven sessions of 10 minutes for her to develop her market intelligence. She develops her materials for her prototype. She gets her product up and running. She publishes her website at 195 Rand. She promotes it with 50 Rand a week on Google AdWords, 200 Rand. At the end of the day, she can monitor her site and see whether she's getting orders with her feature phone. So she buys a 90 minute data bundle and it's all looking good. So ostensibly her business with a prototype is up and running for 850 Rand and it's connecting to digital markets around the world. So her market access is not a problem anymore, which is fantastic. What we did realize as designers is that the open source code, the opportunity for digital really contribute to the bottom of the pyramid marketing in South Africa needs to be rethought completely in the way we're designing interfaces. Because the way the open source is working at the moment is very much a push from the top income bearing people in the blue chip companies down to the bottom of the pyramid. We're quite proudly saying we can push content at them through Mixit. We can uh, get more people on Facebook. But what are we doing as designers to enable them to market back up to the income bearing wealthy people who have disposable income who will buy their products? That's how we'll make successful business. And what were the results? Did we convert? So in our 10 day pilot, yes we did. Um, now, those of you who know Google Figures will know 272,000 people saw Zalisa's ad. Uh, 408 people clicked through, but the best part is there are conversions. We've got our first order, and she got an order for an iPad phone and cover, a little matching set, and she made 180 Rand profit. Now, if we extrapolate that out, in 30 days with six orders at an average profitability of 90 Rand, or 98 Rand per order, She's made 588 Rand. No great shakes, but what it does mean is that in two months, she potentially has her family off the social grant system. That's what's important about this. It is a numbers game, but the numbers are small, but they're very, very potent. They're very important. So let's close off with Richard uh, in capping our theory and our thinking on this design. Um, Two children at 560 Rand per month, and we haven't put any inflation on this, would cost the government 107,000 Rand. Now those girls would have just been clothed and fed and uh, maybe educated up to school, but they wouldn't have gone to university. If we re-divert our focus and attention in this sector, we could assist a grassroots business to connect to markets digitally with a one-off spend of 850 Rand. Thereafter, their family and themselves will believe in their ability to be confident, proud South African business people. Thank you. <laughs>